Greetings. Welcome to the Bears Gym today. The Bears Gym is for Bible study. Yeah, the Bears Gym is for bodybuilding. Sometimes for both. But today our emphasis is upon Bible study. We are in Luke chapter 11. Lots of miracles, wonderful truths here, parables, and insight into the spiritual realm. Here we go. Luke chapter 11, and it came to pass, that is, he was praying in a certain place. When he ceased, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. How would it pray? I think God just pretty much wants you to be honest. But you can't expect to go into the throne room of God until you've come to Jesus Christ for forgiveness, to exercise repentance, in other words, acknowledging your guilt, your sin, contrition, say, I'm, I'm done with the sin, wash it away from me, Lord, don't ever let me do it again. And as you come before the Lord with that attitude with that honesty you offer it up unto the Lord however you can in an honest way Jesus said unto them when you pray say our father Abba father hallowed be thy name thy name is wonderful O God indeed it is thy kingdom come yes indeed Lord May your kingdom happen. Thy will be done. Yes, Lord, I want your will to be done in my life and, and in those around me to its fullest extent. As in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Keep that hunger in us so that we may struggle and survive and, and conduct ourselves in this life. Forgive us our sins, indeed. And when those that sin against you come to you and say, forgive me, forgive them. When there's repentance and contrition, you exercise the same thing as you would do to our Heavenly Father. You come to your Heavenly Father and say, God, forgive me, I've sinned. It's not just a blanket of all forgiveness. You have to come before the Lord in repentance and contrition, confessing your sins and asking Him for forgiveness. He will then forgive you. And you should, your pattern should be in exactly the same way. As those have sinned against you, they come and say, I'm sorry, I, I, I did wrong. Man, I, I really respect the man that says, I, I did wrong. But the flip side of it is somebody that tries to cover over their sin with other external things. It's like, that's, not, that's not it. Okay, you sinned, you did wrong. Confess your sin. Tell, say the truth. And then we're, then we're at peace. Lead us not into temptation. Lord, deliver us from temptation, from testings. Help us to endure during testing. Deliver us from evil. Verse 5, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves? For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, in other words, his perseverance, he will rise and give him as much as he needs. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of you, that is a father, will he not give him a stone? 
Will he give him a stone? No, of course not. Of course not. If he asks for bread, he's going to give him bread, not a rock. If he asks for a fish, otherwise he wants a fish dinner or a steak dinner, are you going to give him a snake? No. You're going to give him a fish dinner or a steak dinner. If he offers for scrambled eggs and bacon, you're going to give him a scorpion? No. That's nasty. You're going to give him breakfast, scrambled eggs. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? When God says, ask and you shall receive, understand, first and, and foremost and most importantly, when you ask God, he's going to give you the Holy Spirit to empower you and to help you to understand the situation that you're not really going to get what you asked for, but I'm going to come and I'm going to comfort you. But you have received what you've asked for. Because what you want is an answer to this. But not your resolve to the answer. God's resolve to the answer. And he was casting out a devil, or a demon, out of a person that was dumb. And it came to pass, when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the demons. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. You want to see the house that's strong? It's a house that's devoted to Jesus Christ, first and foremost. And you will make it through all the struggles. And if you are dedicated first and foremost to Jesus Christ, you're going to be faithful to one another. And perhaps daddy is not as home as much as he would like to be, but he has to work hard to provide for the family. And perhaps the wife doesn't really understand it at the time, but as the years go by, she's going to realize he had to do that. And it was hard, but we made it. And that makes um, a marriage relationship grow even stronger as you make it through hard times that you can't change. You can't change them. You can't pray them away. You have to endure them. But when it's all over, you'll look back. You'll have grown very much stronger. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against the house falleth. If Satan be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast all devils through Beelzebub, the great demon. But if I by Beelzebul cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I with the finger of God cast out demons, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. Wise words. When a strong man armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. You want your nation to be strong militarily. If not, you're going to get run over. If not externally, internally. By the mobs that the communists have brought in to bring dissension in the land. To allow whole people groups to just create crime. And fester trouble and riots. Without the necessity of having to work to provide for their own needs. You take the life out of people when you just give them everything for free. you got to work, biblical work, to provide for your needs and your family's needs. You ruin people when you just give them everything for nothing. You see it in rich kids, you see it in poor kids. If you give them everything for nothing without them having to work for it, they don't learn. They, 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 there's a mentality that ruins them. Keep your home strong, your state strong, and your nation strong. When a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, wherein he trusted and divided his spoils. You don't make peace with the enemy and let him take all your weapons away. 
and thinking there will be peace between us. There comes sometimes a time in a national endeavor where a weak nation being overrun by a strong nation has to accept surrender. But if a nation thinks that if he gives away all of his weapons and depletes his military, and that by that, that strong nation is not going to attack them, you're wrong, my friend. You need to have a strong military nation. You need to have a strong military state. You need to have a strong home. Your, your children and your family need to be equipped with the word of God that they may know how to endure times of trouble. Because times of trouble will come. You cannot escape trouble on this earth. Verse 23, a little shift here. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. If you declare Jesus Christ, realize it's going to be 100%. So you're either with him or you're against him. Don't say you're a Christian and then continue to live in sin. Okay. If you declare that you're a Christian, then you love Jesus Christ and you want to obey him in every aspect of your life. Submitting to his will. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. His word is his commandments. There's many aspects to the law that praise the Lord. We don't have to do anymore. We don't sacrifice sheep and bulls and goats. Jesus paid for that price on the cross. Now the law has come up in our faith and repentance unto what Jesus did on the cross. And then we obey his word. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, in other words, a demon has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and finding none, he saith, I will return to my house whence I came out. Now, I've seen this in many stages of spiritual Christianity. I see people that come forward in these great meetings and they get saved. I think they legitimately get saved. But when they leave, they don't take the word of God and pursue Jesus Christ. Look to be his disciple. They just go off their merry way thinking, oh, that felt good. That was nice. And they're empty. They're, they're, they've been washed clean, but they have not received Jesus Christ. They have not said, Jesus, come into my life and been clean. But well, that's a matter of choice. Because Jesus cast demons out of people. And he didn't command them to now become followers of Jesus. That was their choice. But if they didn't make that their choice, they then became an empty flower barrel. And those demons that were cast out of him most certainly will return with friends. And that's the story here. So the demon couldn't find any rest, and he came back to where he was cast out. And when he came, he find it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with him seven other demons, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Boy, you see that. Somebody becomes a Christian, but they don't take the word of God and the cross of Christ and carry on into the narrow road. They just let their life go asunder, and their life becomes more of a mess than it ever was. Not that you can't, they can't be restored back in, but if you walk away from Christ, expect your life to become a mess eventually. You might get away with it for a while, but eventually your life will become a mess, and one day you'll look back and say, wow, one day, long ago, me and Jesus talked together because... He made me clean, and my life was clean, and we talked freely. But now you have a guilt complex of all the bad choices you've made, the sins you've done. You haven't repented of them. You haven't stopped the sin. You've gotten involved in sins that have made you feel very dirty. But wherever you're at, 
Stop today. Stop now. Turn back to Jesus Christ. Stop the sin. Let him wash you clean. Start fresh and anew because God allows re-kicks. He wants you to re-kick your life whenever you're in over your head. And don't wait. Don't wait till tomorrow to get things right. Do it right now. Get things right right now. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast nursed. And he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah the prophet was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man to be to this generation. That should have been a testimony to them. Jonah went down into the depths of the earth in a whale. Jesus is going to go into the depths of the earth, into the, into the absolute pit of the earth where there was a paradise for all the saints of old that had died in the faith. It wasn't hell, it wasn't the Abuso. They were in a separate compartment. But he descended into the earth as Jonah did to some extent. It was like a picture, not perfect, but a picture. Now, another kind of a slight shift. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn them. For they repented that the preaching of Jonah and behold, something than Jonah is here. No man, when he has lighted a candle, puts it on a secret place. Neither underneath a basket. But when you light a candle to light up the room, you put it on a candlestick. I don't know if you've had power outages in your land, your part of the country. But when you do, you put it on a candle that's up high and it lights a room. You put it down on the floor, you can hardly see anything. But if you put it up high, it brings light to the room. But you put a candle on a candlestick, nice and high, so it'll light the room. The light of the body is the eye. Be careful what you're viewing, what you're reading. Therefore, when thine eye is clean, thy whole body is also full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness. Be careful what your eyes are allowed to go off into. Discipline your eyes. Walk out of a movie theater, walk out of a business meeting when they're showing you nasty things as entertainment. Walk out of your school classroom when they're showing you nasty and evil things. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no dark part, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. That's what I love about Jesus. He ate and, and fellowshiped and feasted with his brethren. The time came when they fasted. Jesus had fasted for 40 days. Now he's in his ministry time period. Before it was preparation. And sometimes there's a time of fasting. But in the fellowship of the body, in the basic course of life, they're eating and fellowshipping. As a bear, you can really appreciate that. And he went and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisees saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Pharisees are always looking to, to cut things in half. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye, the Pharisees, make clean the outside of the cup and the platter? But your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ye fools, did not he that has made that which is within make which is without also? But rather give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. 
These ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus sayest thou also reproaches us. He said, Woe unto you also, lawyers, for ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear the witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Wherefore also, said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them ye shall slay and persecute. That the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not into yourselves. Good counsel. And them that were entering ye in, to good counsel you hindered. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him of. See, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are kind of like trial, small claims court. They're not so much concerned about the truth or justice or what's right and what's wrong. They want to they want to fight over little picadillo words or picadillo things or somebody doesn't know the exact way to conduct to defend themselves in court. That's what they want to rip apart, not whether or not it's true or false or the big bank is wrong or at fault. No, they, they have their own course, practicing law. Or in the church, say, hey, this guy is preaching outside of a tavern. He shouldn't be doing it. Well, then you get out and preach someplace else where you think it's right. But usually you find those people, they just want to slice apart little picadillos. They're not really concerned about truth. They're just looking to find fault because they have a guilty conscience about something. So it's easier to find fault in somebody else than to deal with your own sin. And that was pretty much the Pharisees and Sadducees as a whole with maybe one or two as an exception. and um, But we'll leave that for another time. But most certainly, God has shown us wonderful parables, truths, some insight into the netherworld. It's wonderful to study the Word of God. Because the more you read it, the more you realize you didn't really know that much. And God will always share something deeper and more heartfelt every time you read it. Because it's the word of God that's eternal. And we're just we're just kind of like little bears, little sheep. But every time we read the word of God, the Holy Spirit ups us. Gives us one more little perk, one more little XP to help us grow. And every year we pop just a little higher in spiritual maturity because we've taking it upon ourselves to study the Word of God and let life happen as God would have it. God bless you, friends. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.